I think that there are enormous aspects of being a human which are beyond being rational. If I flip a coin 10,000 times, I can calculate the probability that it will come out 4,793 heads. Notice that I knew ahead of time all the possibilities, all heads, all tails, all everything else, right? That is to say, I knew what the statisticians and mathematicians call the sample space of the process. We do not know the sample space of the process for the becoming of the biosphere or the becoming of technological evolution. So we cannot make a probability statement, which raises a really profound question which goes to the heart of humanism. How do we make our way in the world when we do not know what can happen. Reason is an insufficient guide to live your life when you do not know what can happen. How are you going to reason about it, right? So, so there's something very deep going on here. Egyptians who were in prison were radicalized um, because they were tortured, and this includes them and also Harry. Um, you must have been like so disturbed when you found out about Albert Gray. Oh, okay, got it. It was unbelievable to me. It just, you know, it was, you know, it had flashback, of course, to the siege. There is a well established body of theory in complexity and complex adaptive systems and so on. And I know it well. I've been part of, of inventing it with people at the Santa Fe Institute and so on. What if that doesn't entail everything that happens in the universe? Here's reductionism, okay? There's a theory down there that entails everything that happens logically. Now, suppose we say, well, we have grounds to think that that's false. Then we say, gee, it's false. Then we say, well, now what? I mean, what is it to be in the world if there is not a body of theory down there that entails everything that happens? Can you feel the puzzle? When I first hit this, I thought to myself, good grief, I don't know what's going to happen. How can I decide what to do? And then, then I went through two steps that made it easier for me. I thought, Life's been doing it for 3.8 billion years, so it must be solvable because we're doing it. And the other thing is that I realized I don't deduce my life, I live it. And so do you, right? Well, what are we doing when we're living our lives? We're not carrying out some sort of optimization program over a known set of variables. We're doing something radically different. Suppose you're a utilitarian, like Bentham and Mill, and you say, act for the greatest good of the greatest number. That assumes you know the consequences of your action. What if we don't? How do we behave ethically when we cannot know what can happen? We have to act not knowing. We have to. And that, that's not part of our training. We're trained to think, let's do decision science, Right, where we have a well, a well specified problem, and we, we do some optimization technique on it. But that isn't real life. It's just not real life. So science has seduced us into thinking that it is real life, but it's not. Life is much richer than that, which I find glorious and confusing and wonderful and mysterious. We've been spiritual probably for the last million years. It's being spiritual. It's not studying it as an academic subject that matters. It's, um, for me, it's looking out the window and saying, all of this came into being with nobody in charge. That's miracle enough for me. And human culture? the evolution of human culture and common law in England. It's magnificent. So to be awestruck by it uh, is, a, I think, a deep part of what it means to be a human.
If you believe in the Abrahamic God of our traditions, then there is a loving Father in heaven, and you can pray to that loving Father in heaven, and he will look out for you. It carries with it the problem of evil. For example, my daughter was killed when she was 13 years old. And that was shattering. Uh, imagine that I had also believed in a God who would protect me and my family, and the consequence of my daughter's being killed is that I lost my faith. That would be even more shattering. If instead you believe that there is a creativity in the universe, which is awesome and magnificent, it requires of us a different sense of God. Not an agent creator God who can act on our behalf, but a creativity in the universe that we can participate in. So you can't, you can't pray to this God, but you can give thanks to this God. That's a lot. That's a lot to be awed by and um, reverential towards what comes to exist, and therefore responsible within the limits of what we can know. It's as if this invites us to grow up as a species.